Itchy, allergic skin is the number one reason that dogs are taken to the veterinarian's office. And since 2014, one of the most prescribed drugs to quote unquote treat this itchy, allergic skin is Apoquel. Uh, Cytopoint is another one I'm very much aware that's been around for a while. It's used sometimes even in combination with Apoquel, but today we are talking about Apoquel specifically because I just, I think it needs to be talked about. It is not the solution to all of your problems. Um, it can be beneficial for a short period of time, but it's not being used appropriately. So I want to get into the deep end on the drug Apoquel today because so many dogs are on it. Pretty much Almost every one of my clients have been on it at some point in their life, the dogs, the, the dog clients. And that's just because I seem to get a lot of cases that are food sensitivities, itchy, allergic skin, um, what we like to call immune dysfunction. We'll talk about that as well in just a minute on the Pet Parenting Reset. <coughs> Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Well, Pet Parent, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, you, If you have not been <laughs> prescribed Apoquel yourself, or your dog, excuse me, it's not for humans, it is not for cats, it is only for dogs. So anytime I say you, <laughs> I'm referring to a dog when we're talking about Apoquel. If your dog has not been prescribed Apoquel um, for some reason, then you likely know someone whose dog has been prescribed Apoquel for some reason. Now, the reasons, the, the terms that our veterinarians may use for prescribing Apoquel are flea allergy dermatitis, atopic dermatitis, food allergy dermatitis, contact dermatitis, scarcoptic mange, uh, demodetic mange, and the reality is, while these are really um, uh, fun terms to throw around, they themselves are symptoms and not causes. So the reality is that we need to be looking for the cause. I don't know how many times I've said this on this podcast. So if this is the first time you are seeing me or you are finding me, um, know that whatever we're doing, we are trying. the the best thing we can do to help our pets is to find the underlying cause of what's going on and work on that. Now, in the meantime, do we sometimes need to put band-aids on symptoms to help us get through, to help our pets get through? Yes. Which is why I am not I am not doing this podcast today to demonize Apoquel. I think it has a time and a place. I just think we are using it completely incorrectly. And there's so many things I want to get to today about Apoquel and a few things that I'm going to pull directly from a, a blog post or a couple of blog posts that Dr. Will Falconer did, um, which is on his vitalanimal.com website. He is no longer practicing in the United States. He has retired himself to India, um, but he still stays on top of things and um, puts out a lot of really wonderful content um, and really has a very good understanding of both um, pharmaceuticals and veterinary medicine and where it goes right and where it goes wrong, which is why I trust him as a source. So Apoquel is a drug that was put on the market in 2014 by Zoetis. Zoetis is former, was formerly known as Pfizer Animal Health. So Zoetis is the animal branch of 
Pfizer. Now, we're all familiar with Pfizer. They're probably the biggest pharmaceutical company or at least one of the biggest pharmaceutical companies in the world. Um, one of the biggest problems fundamentally, hands down, with the way this drug came to market is uh, the study, the testing that was done. So <laughs> Zoetis themselves did the testing. The testing was only done for 30 days and a conflict of interest was listed in the paperwork submitted to the FDA stating all, all authors are current or former employees of Zoetis. Apoquel is a registered trademark of Zoetis. So the study was initiated and funded by Zoetis, formerly Pfizer Animal Health. So that in and of itself is very suspicious, but obviously the FDA is good with it. So what, what happens? What happens when your dog goes into the veterinarian because they're itching like crazy, because they have hot spots, because they have patches of fur missing, because it seems like every time they walk outside or everything you feed them, they get bright red, itchy, irritated, sometimes painful skin, recurring ear infections. They are constantly licking their paws. Um, their paws are itchy. They are, they're uncomfortable. We go back and back and back and back to the veterinarian's office because everything they give us is a patch, is a band-aid. It works for a little while and then it doesn't work anymore. We treat an ear infection great. It maybe clears up. At least it clears up as far as we can see. This is why it's so important for you to go back to your veterinarian to make sure it has cleared up because they can actually use their otoscope and get down, look down into the ear to make sure it actually has cleared up. And, but that's a side note. <laughs> um, we think the antibiotic cleared up the ear infection. A month later, boom, we're right back because the ear infection is flared again. And we think this is a brand new ear infection. It may or it may not be. It could be the same ear infection that just wasn't treated properly in the first place. But again, that is a whole side story that we don't need to get into today. So what is Apoquel? Well, Apoquel is an immune modulator is what the experts call it. And I'm not going to get too scientific about this because I think I don't like it when people talk to me that way. <laughs> You know, if, if it could possibly go over my head, please don't break it down for me. Tell me like I'm a fifth grader. We're all good if we can do that, right? So basically, what is an immune, immune modulator? It is stopping the immune system from, from functioning like it's supposed to function. Because what's happening when your dog gets this red, irritated, itchy skin, um, possibly bright red, painful skin, constantly licking their paws, recurring ear infections. Um, there, there's so much more that could be happening, hot spots, patchy skin and fur. Um, these are all signs that there is dysbiosis in the gut. Now, if we go back and look through Dr. Will Falconer's um, blog post, he highly suspects this to be vaccine reaction. Is that possible? Absolutely. I think it's also possible that feeding um, highly processed, high heat processed, dry food, high in starchy carbohydrates over an extended period of time also leads to chronic inflammation and dehydration in the body. And so one or both could be true. It could be the food we're feeding. It could also be vaccine reaction. Regardless of which one of those it is, and we can we can work with both of those uh, at the root level. What happens is the immune system responds, and it's and it it kind of goes into this term that people like to call immune confusion. I don't think our body. I don't. I don't think that is the most appropriate term for it. I think what our body naturally does is correct. 
Um, we call it immune confusion because we don't want it to do what it's doing, but it's doing what it should be doing because what we're putting in the body shouldn't be there. What we're putting in the body is detrimental. And because it's inconvenient for us, because that's not what we want it to do, we call it immune confusion. I, I completely disagree with that term. Nonetheless, here we are. So Apoquil basically stops the immune system from doing what it's supposed to do. It suppresses the immune system. And initially, a lot of dogs, a lot of people will see positive results in their dogs from giving them Apoquil. And the drug manufacturer itself, Zoetis, says that it can work as fast as four hours from the first pill. So, and Apoquil is something that doesn't like build up in the body. So you constantly have to give it. If you miss a dose, your dog is going to be right back to itchy, red, irritated. You know, they're, they're going to have these flare ups because you missed a dose. Um, whether that's by design or not, I can't speak to. But anyway, <laughs> it is an immune modulator. It tells, it, it basically stops the immune system from doing what it's supposed to do. And these, <laughs> this symptom relief that it provides can feel like a godsend. I get that. Which is why I say there is a time and a place for it. Do we need to use a pharmaceutical like Apoquel or Cytopoint? And I'm just going to throw that in there. We're not talking about Cytopoint today, but this, this is another option at your veterinarian to get us through the hump while we are addressing the root cause of what's going on. Okay. If that needs to happen, if your dog is uncomfortable enough, yeah. You know, the primary concern is making sure your dog is as comfortable as we can make them. So yeah, if we need to use it, we need to use it, but it is not a long-term strategy. It is potentially quite detrimental um, to your dog's health. And I have met personally some dogs that have been on Apoquel the majority of their lives and holy moly, I mean, you know, these pet parents feel like they can't miss a dose. And yet, even with the Apoquil, their dog is absolutely miserable because it just doesn't work long term. In fact, let's look at some of the side effects that are listed um, by Zoetis for Apoquil. Now, I'm going to take you back to my college days when I was going through, um, I, I graduated with a bachelor's of science. So I did study science in college. And one of the things that stuck with me more than anything was, um, one of my professors who I took for many, many, many of my classes said side effects are effects of the drug that the manufacturer of the drug doesn't want you to pay attention to. So I hope that sticks with you as much as it sticks with me because literally anytime I look at side effects, all I can think of are is that 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 my professor said. Side effects of a drug are effects of a drug that the manufacturer doesn't want you to pay attention to. So here are the side effects that uh, Zoetis has listed for Apoquel. Diarrhea, decreased appetite, um, oh, what is this one? It's truncated. New cutaneous or subcutaneous lumps. I've seen that a lot in dogs. Scabs and sores. Lethargy. Decreased leukocytes, which is something you'll see in the blood work. Anorexia, vomiting, tumors, and increased risk of infections. Now, why are we seeing all of this? Because especially the increased risk of, risk of infections and tumors, um, decreased leukocytes, lethargy, um, lump, lumps and bumps, scabs and sores, because we are telling, we're, we're, by giving our dog Apoquil, we are telling the immune system to stop functioning properly. Stop doing what you're doing. Stop providing support and help and help to this poor dog's body. Stop doing what you're doing. So we are opening the floodgates to any and any, any and everything 
that could potentially go wrong in the body because the immune system isn't functioning the way it's supposed to. So then what do we do? An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. I know you've heard this over and over and over, but it is worth repeating. So then what do we do? We minimize vaccines. We remove as much as we can the really nasty pesticides that we put on and in our pets, likely every month. Heartworm, flea and tick. I've done other episodes on that. Please go back and listen to them. Um, there's also lots of blog posts on my website, jessicaalfisher.com. Um, remove them. If like, I know we can be really scared of removing heartworm prevention specifically, um, and I have done episodes on that as well because I understand how scary it is. So we want to minimize that as much as possible and do things naturally as much as possible. Feeding your animals food that meets their genetic expectations is how Dr. Falconer um, words it. That's, that's an incredible way of wording it. Feed your animals food that meets their genetic expectations. For the carnivores in your house, that means balanced raw food diets. Now, have I also had clients on uh, balanced home cooked diets? Yes, absolutely. Um, it's, it, the whole point here is removing the huge amounts of starchy carbohydrates, highly processed foods, high heat processed foods. We want the nutrition to come from real food. And understand that if your animal is already sick, if you are on this roller coaster and you feel like you can't get off of Apoquel or even Cytopoint because your dog is going to go downhill, find a holistic veterinarian. If you can't find a holistic veterinarian, find a, a holistic pet health coach. Um, I personally am a holistic pet health coach. I'm also a certified canine nutritionist. So I. I specialize in working with food as medicine. And it's hard for me to say that. I, I should not I shouldn't use the word medicine, but that's the real that is the reality. Food can be, and this is something Dr. Katie Woodley says, food can be the slowest form of poison or the best form of medicine. And so I specialize in using food and, of course, removing all of the junk that we should not be putting in and on our dog's bodies, cleaning up the environment. Um, it can take a while, but it is so worth it. And one other side effect of Apoquel that I want to talk about, but um, Zoetis does not list on their website, though they did list tumors. So it's getting in that realm of, of, um, the C word, but it is very possible. And I have seen it happen to many dogs. I don't like, I don't like saying the C word, but, um, because it is such a oh, touchy triggering topic to attempt to even correlate the use of a medication like Apoquel to uh, cancer, the C word. I'm going to just read you what Dr. Will Falconer's blog says because I want to make sure that anything that I'm tying to the C word is coming from a veterinarian. Um, so he says he wants to make sure you're aware of something. Did you know that for decades now, at least, immunologists have known that you and I and every animal on the beautiful blue planet are making mistakes in our cells every day. They're called mutations. Mutations happen during cell division, which is pretty much a nonstop process in a living being. When you've worn out a liver cell or you've got to knit a cut back to normal closed skin, it's cell division that makes that possible. But like all biological systems, cell division isn't a perfect process. Some oopsies happen and the copy comes out wrong. Some mutations are harmless. Some, when certain genes are involved, cause runaway cell division that uh, 
is way past what's necessary. And the result there is tumors. So tumor cells are in me and you and your dog right now. The understanding of those steeped in immunology is that it's our immune system that is the sole reason every mutation that starts running wild in cell division doesn't create cancer. The third process is referred to as tumor immune surveillance, whereby the immune system identifies cancerous and or precancerous cells and eliminates them before they can cause harm. The idea that the immune system, which is so effective, uh, which so effectively protects the host from, from microbial pathogens might also recognize and destroy tumor cells was first discussed over a century ago and has recently been reviewed in detail, and he actually links to um, a National Institute of Health article. Um, we likely have regular battles waged on cancer cells that never become tumors. Why? Our immune system correctly saw these cancer cells or these cells as foreigners and called in the guard like white blood cells, complement, interferon, natural killer cells, etc. This, they summoned those kinases known to be great communicators that help coordinate the attack on the wayward cells leaning towards becoming cancerous. What is Apoquel good at? Taking out some of those kinases, remember? So we're modulating the immune system. It's an immune communication breakdown that's possible. And is that possible when we mess with these kinases? Dr. Falconer says, I'd bet on it. And... It's as if Zoetis never got the memo about how important our immune system is to prevent cancer. Apoquel may increase the chances of developing serious infections and may cause pre I'm, I'm sorry, and may cause existing parasitic skin infestations or pre-existing cancers to get worse. That's in the company literature for the drug Apoquel. Let me read that one more time. Apoquel may increase the chances of developing serious infections and may cause existing parasitic skin infestations or pre-existing cancers to get worse. Pre-existing cancers, Dr. Falconer goes on to say, isn't that what we've known about for all these decades? They are all pre-existing until they get a green light to grow aren't they? So there are actually lots of, um, in the blog post that Dr. Will Falconer has, lots of pet parents have um, submitted what has been going on with their pets that were on Apoquel, dogs that have been on Apoquel. Um, and it's pretty devastating to read through them. I will include um, in the show notes a link to the blog posts that I am referring to um, so that you can go and read them as well. It is so important. And what we, what we want to do with these dogs, hopefully, you know, we can get to a dog before. <laughs> I always think of in my mind, my pet sitter's dog, Bevo, who passed away. They, they had to let him go last year. He lived the majority of his life, nine years on Apoquel. And he, for the entire time I knew him, was miserable. Miserable. Varying degrees of misery, I will say, but especially towards the end. Like, I I kept him in my home one weekend um, to watch him just to see what I could do, which, by the way, he absolutely loved the raw food I gave him. He begged and begged and begged for it. It was about the only time he wanted to get out of his bed. He spent every moment in his bed um, outside of when he, I, I would make him, I would have to pick him up and take him outside to go potty um, multiple times a day. And it was, it was the saddest thing I think I've ever personally experienced. Um, but anyway, these are some things that we need to know about that your vet may not be discussing with you. So if your veterinarian is prescribing something like Apoquel, then understand this is not a long-term solution. This is to get you through while you are addressing the underlying causes. 
So if your veterinarian is prescribing a drug like this, then my first, ooh, bump the mic. Um, my first question to them would be, thank you for this Band-Aid. Um, if you choose to use it, that's up to you. Thank you for this Band-Aid. What are we going to do to support, clear up the underlying causes of this? Because this isn't a long-term solution. That's my two cents. And the two cents of many others in the holistic pet health space. Um, it's just, it can be just as devastating. It can be just as devastating. It is something, it is a tool that we can use to help us get through while we're treating the underlying cause of the symptoms. That is the most important thing that I want you to take away from today's episode. So with that, I'm going to say thank you so much for joining me. I had to get this off my chest and um, hopefully it helps you or someone you know. If you know anyone who has a dog with these allergy symptoms um, that may be on a drug like Aquaquel or Cytopoint, please send this to them. This is so important to know. So important to know. Um, yeah. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being such a supportive listener. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you. Um, every once in a while, I, I try to make a point to come on and do these solo episodes. We have so many wonderful guests and I actually have other episodes with guests to, um, to edit and get out to you. But I, I really, this was weighing heavy on me and I wanted to get this out to you. So especially now that we're heading into, um, in, into spring, uh, so many dogs can be triggered with environmental allergies in spring. Um, and there's just so much more we can do so much more we can do so many more natural options. Um, again, I, prefer to use food as much as possible, but there are also supplements that can help um, as long as we are using them in combination with, you can't out supplement a bad diet. I know I've said that before too. So with that, I'm going to end today's episode. Thank you again for being here with me. And I can't wait to talk to you again next week.